Hey, what's going on? Danny Matei here with PT Biz, and we are in Scottsdale, Arizona, highlighting Pinnacle Performance and Wellness. It's AJ Kimmett's place, and we came here to show you exactly what an early stage cash-based practice in a gym looks like, just in case you want to have one yourself. So AJ, how long have you been in this space? I've been here since August of this year. Okay, so August, and this was, I think you were telling me you had uh, a gym closed down, a person move out, like it was like a shuffling around, right? Yeah, it was perfect timing actually. Yeah, my last gym was uh, was another CrossFit gym as well, yeah. smaller gym, but it was perfect, great community inside of there. We had another sublease space in there. Um, they were shutting down due to like some sublease, you know, leasing obligations right. that were just tough. Um, and then this facility was much larger, about 200 plus members here. Uh, their PT was leaving at the right time, so same month actually. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> um, so we just we just switched places, and uh, now she's traveling the world, and I'm over here. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's head in. Let's check out the uh, the office. Let's check out the gym, and we'll meet you guys inside. Let's do this, man. Show us your space. So where, what are we working with? Absolutely. So this is the lobby right here. Uh, we have our office right in here, which is just off the lobby. Uh, we've got our treatment room, treatment area, needles, cups, everything that you need uh, to get that manual therapy in. So this is where the magic happens. I had the same exact table, literally, for, I think it's still at our office. Like, I think 10 years later, they're still using this in one of the one of the offices. These things are great. You said you got this off of Amazon, right? Amazon, yeah. Funny enough, I just bought all this stuff in August, so this is yeah. perfect time. Great. So, <laughs> chairs, about 50 bucks. This table, about 50, like 80 bucks or so. This table was um, the most expensive thing. It was, yeah. it was about 250 $300. Oh, it's gone up since when um, I bought it. Yeah, so it's a nice table, very sturdy. Yeah. Um, you know, laundry room right there, cart, shelving unit all with, within about a hundred bucks or so. So cool. all in, probably $500. Nice. <laughs> Start a business for 500 bucks. So like how much time are you spending in here versus how much time are you spending in the gym? Because when we walked in, you were helping somebody with some squat mechanics it looked like, right? Yeah, so you're probably yeah. doing quite a bit in there as well. Yeah, I'd say about 50-50. Yeah. So I try to do about 15, 30 minutes of the session uh, in the treatment room, and then we try to do as much as we can out there. Yeah. Uh, sometimes later in the plan of care, we're really in here just to chat it up real quick and then get out to the gym. So we're working on uh, refining movement mechanics, strengthening, mobility, whatever we need to do there. Yeah. What are, what are your go-to sort of manual techniques before you get into actually working with somebody in the gym? Yeah, we do a lot of manual techniques. Uh, since we're St. Augustine, we have a lot of like thoracic, lumbar mm. um, mobilizations that we know that are really beneficial. We work with a lot of golfers too, so um, a lot of TPI certification stuff. So like understanding how to move that thoracic spine through the range of motion, uh, kind of facilitating that with our hands. Um, but we do a lot of dry needling to help out with people that are in chronic pain, acute yeah. pain. Um, it can really create that, that nice response that we can actually then go load it in the gym yeah. as quickly as possible. What is it, what's the average person looking like coming through here? Yeah, funny enough, like I, I started this business because I wanted to work with like 100% golfers. Really? Yeah. You just found office in a, uh, like a space in your yeah, CrossFit gym? Yeah, just, I just found a space uh, in the last CrossFit gym that I was in and, yeah. I, fell, and I fell in love with it. I fell, yeah. fell in love with CrossFit, I fell in love with the people that were inside of it yeah. and make sure, and, and their movements were, were bigger than CrossFit. It was yeah. like daily life things that I could help out. With. Yeah. So I really felt like a like a passion for those people, and uh -huh. then it led to this CrossFit gym, which is a little bit higher level. People are actually competing in yeah. uh, you know competitions. So um, so now that I've kind of refined into uh, more of the movement pattern based physical therapy, yeah. I think it's helping everyone out here. Um, I see probably 75% um, CrossFitters, phys functional fitness athletes um, like F45 Orange Theory. Yeah. Uh, they're probably 25% golfers right now. Like. As you got going with this clinic, what's been the hardest part for you as far as like actually starting your business goes? I mean, like before I got into the the mastermind, before I got in the Rainmaker, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know anything. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know how to how to position myself. I didn't know how to market. I didn't know how to talk to these people at different gyms to to create a a good relationship. Um, I was just kind of like you know, plug and play of whatever I've heard on the podcast. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so when I got into the Rainmaker, I, f I figured things out a little bit, you know, more clear. I saw a path and I did that for about a year. And I felt good with what I was doing, but it was 
I hit like a, a limiting factor there where I just needed that next step. I needed to hire somebody, I needed right. to grow, I needed to negotiate leases, I needed to do these yeah. kind of things that were just higher level things um, that I just didn't have the direction to go to. So when I joined the mastermind, all that came so much clearer. Right, right? that's good. Um, so that's, that's been like the most difficult thing early on was like, everything but now it's become more refined where I feel much better with what I'm doing and now I still have questions about where I'm gonna go next tell me why did you start your own practice like was there a I can't take a shit anymore moment that <laughs> it was just like this is it and now I'm doing my own thing yeah uh, it was back in 2020 <laughs> was it because of like was, were you furloughed or was it no uh, I actually kept my job through it I, I was we were with a sports clinic at yeah. the time uh, right, out of, right out of school I um, I was with this great organization, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we saw like, you know, 90% soccer kids, volleyball girl, like it was just really athletic yeah. and it was awesome. Barely any post out. Um, during 2020, they had some like financial hardships, I think, and they had to sell the company to um, a larger like orthopedic oh, okay. um, physician owned sort of like the orthopedic group. Yeah. Um, big group out here, Ortho Arizona. Um, so they they swallowed up those five clinics that they had, and then they we went from like a sports clinic on Friday to a post-op Medicare clinic oh, on man. Monday. And it was, it was like that quick. So I really felt like my talents that I developed over the last couple of years had, were not being utilized. Yeah. So, you know, it's 2021 or so, um, you know, my wife's in nursing school, we just need a little extra um, support at home. So I just wanted to, to, you know, I reached out to a couple friends or, or past clients and was like, you know, hey, like, you know, would you like to see me on the side and, and get a little more attention? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, good handful of them came on and then we just did that as a side hustle for a year. Yeah. And uh, after a year of doing, you know, 70 hour work weeks. It's a lot. It was, uh, I was a little burnt out and I was like, listen, I gotta either commit to one thing or the other. So I was like, what's, what's, the, what's giving me the most drive right now and what's giving me the most passion is this business. Mm. And, and being in for myself, making my own decisions and kind of risking it um, at that point. Um, so yeah, we just went fall all in 2022. Yeah. And uh, I'll never look. Was there any doubt when you decided to go part-time to full-time that you're like, man, I don't know if I can make this work. Or were you really confident that like, I just, if I get more time on this, like it's gonna do really well. You know, I was I was really confident in in that fact that I if I committed 100% to this, it would be it would be successful. And I and you know, lo and behold, the first month that I was full time, so like February to March, March is when I went full time. Yeah, uh, we made twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, whereas February I made five thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's a huge difference. There's a huge difference because I had I had more time to do things. Yeah. And then I had all the people that I was, I was kind of building up into um, that couldn't get in on the schedule in, in February. They yeah. all they all came in on March. Yeah. And it was right. like this. It was just like amazing. they sort of like, oh, yeah. I'm never gonna go back to yeah. my last job again. Yeah. I never have to. Yeah. You know. Like, how's that for you? How's that transition been from being a employee to self-employed? And is there any? thing that would put you back into, you know, the W-2 environment? No, no, I would, I would never go back to a W-2 environment. I, I think I'm too far past yeah. that at this point. You've taken the, <laughs> the, the pill, yeah. you're gone. <laughs> Seeing the opposite side, yeah. Um, but no, I think it's, I think what you said is, is spot on, is like self-sufficiency. Yeah. I, I think not having to rely on someone else for a paycheck, I, I can, um, you know, the, the more that you hustle, the more that you work, the more reward there is. And you know, in the W2 environment, I don't think that that's a one-to-one -one relationship. Yeah. The more you put in, you know, I was seeing 100 people a week uh, at my last Dang. job, and now I see 100 people in a month. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I'm making much more than I did last then. Yeah. So, if you just hustle more in this environment, it's, it's paid off almost one-to-one. -one. Yeah. But over there, it takes, you know, months for the, bonus structure or whatever they have right. in place to, to kind of roll in and for reimbursement and all that stuff. So I think, I don't think I would ever go back to a W-2. I think it's definitely time flexibility for yeah. me. Um, I, I, I wrote like in our uh, our goal setting course, yeah. um, that I never want to miss a birthday or an anniversary or um, a holiday. That's huge. And uh, and I haven't, not, yeah. not, not in a couple years now. 
So I'm happy about that because yeah. that improves my relationship with my wife and my family oh, yeah. and all that stuff. So um, that's really important to me. Imagine you can like call your shot five years from now. You can look back. We'll have the video, right? So you can be like, all right, I'm gonna go check this video out. Was I off? Was I right? Did I overshoot it? Undershoot it? Whatever. What 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 is like a home run for you for Pinnacle in five years? Five years, I would love to have uh, three more providers with me, front office staff, and have my own standalone built-out space that um, is really catered to the fitness athlete and the golfer. Yeah. Um, kind of those two those two big populations as as much as possible. Um, we got a thriving, healthy environment. We're in Scottsdale area through here, um, and we have great relationships with. Uh, the gyms that are in the area, the trainers in the area, and uh, the community at large. Yeah. AJ, this is awesome, man. Congrats on the on the clinic. If you're interested in learning more, where can they uh, find out more about you? Like, what's your uh, you know website and, and uh, social uh, platforms? Find us on the website at pinnaclepwaz.com or on Instagram at pinnacle underscore pw. Uh, we're both we're very social on there, so reach out to us. Cool. That's it. Hey, Pinnacle. Scott's deal, check it out. If you're looking for a job, AJ's awesome. He'll be a great employer, promise you that. All right, see you guys next time.